But what we've done is we've actually taken the two solutions here and two metals and put the metal in its own solution. So this is a copper two ion solution. This is a zinc ion solution. And we've put, well, that, what you're going to say, well, chem guy, is that, is that a spontaneous reaction? No, it's not. When you put a metal into its own solution, that's a non-spontaneous reaction. It has to be on one of these charts here. In order to be spontaneous, it's got to be left over right. When you get left over right, you've got a spontaneous reaction when you put those chemicals together. If your strongest oxidizing agent was down here and your strongest producing agent was here, well, that would be uh, right over left, and that's non-spontaneous with a negative voltage. But these cells must be spontaneous. So it's always going to be left over right. Always going to be left over right. Always. And that means it's going to be a positive voltage always when you set this up. Now, who's losing and who's gaining? Well, if the strongest oxidizing agent here in all of this is the copper 2 ions, what's happening and what wants to happen over here is that copper 2 ions are going to gain electrons to form Cu. That's the half reaction in the data booklet or, in the, or, in the, or on your uh, reduction oxidation table. That is the one that's going to undergo uh, reduction. And here is the reaction for the oxidation. Now, those two half reactions are taking place. We found the SOA and the SRA here. Now, What's going to be happening here? It says that the copper is going to gain, a copper ion, sorry, is going to gain electrons. From where? Well, from the zinc that's going to lose those electrons. And where's it going to lose them? It's going to lose them through the wire. The zinc here is going to lose electrons this way. Electrons are going to flow this way through the wire to go, well, not to this CU because the CU doesn't care. The Cu is just merely the conduit by which we actually get those electrons into this solution and give them to the Cu2 positive. What we want here is just a strip of something that won't react with this solution but will allow electrons to be conducted down it. That could be a piece of copper, no problem. It also could be a piece of carbon, we'll get to that in a second. So, this is what's happening. We're losing electrons here from the zinc, and the copper ions in solution are gaining those electrons. And, by the way, we've done this one before. The voltage for this cell, what's the voltage going to be? Um, this is going to be the reverse of, that's going to be the reverse of uh, positive 0.76 volts, uh, negative 0.76 volts, so it's positive. And this one, that E0 for that reaction, was, ne was positive, 0 decimal 34 volts. When you now add those two together, it's 1.10 volts. That's the voltage for this cell. But what's going on? And this is not a complete diagram yet. You just have to understand something about why this is taking place in the first place. And it's because even though these, this zinc is removed from this copper ions that it's spontaneously reacting with, removed, they're connected together, not just by wire, but you have to connect the solutions together. And so we put in a bridge, and that bridge has an electrolyte in it, and that electrolyte is generally, well, it's got to be kind of a strong electrolyte, but it's got to be a chemical that certainly won't react with any other solutions here. So like something like KNO3, because potassium ions and nitrate ions very rarely ever precipitate with anything. Just, they just practically don't. And so that's a really good conducting solution. And why do you need that? You need that to be able to complete an electrical circuit here so electrons can move. Now, here's the thing. We understand that that's the half reactions in, that are involved. And you add those together and you can get a net reaction. The voltage would be positive 1.10 volts. But nothing would happen here without the bridge here that connects the two solutions together and allows the zinc to actually be in contact with the Cu2 positive without directly touching it. That bridge is called a salt bridge because that chemical in there, KNO3, is a salt. Uh, by the way, KNO3, sodium nitrate, uh, nitrates are always the best. Ammonium nitrate would be really good in the salt bridge as well. Uh, by the way, it's a glass tube, and I just put cotton at the ends to hold the solution in. And it'll do a really good job of doing that. Now, what does this solution allow? It allows movement of ions. And here's the thing. 
It's not complete diagram without putting in the movement of ions. So, what do you mean by that? It means this. Electrons will flow from this to this electrode here. These are electrodes. When ions are allowed to flow as well to complete an electrical circuit. This, cap, this right here, this, cop, this piece of copper right here, is the electrode where cations from this solution here will go and migrate to this electrode here. And so that will be actually be called the cathode. But why does that take place? Quite simply, it's this reason. Think about it. If you're having this reaction occur here, where the Cu2 positive is going to go up to this bar over here and it's going to gain these electrons coming down, the Cu2 positive is leaving solution to form solid copper, which means that that solution is acquiring a negative charge. There ain't no negative charge in there, chem guy. Well, look, if it's a Cu2 positive solution, what was the solution in there? Maybe it was copper 2 nitrate. You just can't have a copper 2 ion solution. No such thing. But you can put nitrate ions in here. And if that was a copper 2 nitrate ion solution, the copper 2 ions going up to the bar have now left the nitrates alone. <laughs> the copper 2 ions went to the bar because they were attracted to the electrons. Don't go to the bar. Don't be attracted. But sometimes you just do. So the thing is, the nitrates are left alone. But the zinc ions over here, well, what's happened here? The zinc is breaking down into ions. This metal here is breaking down into these ions and if this was a zinc nitrate solution as well there's an accumulation of positive charge here. This positive charge accumulation sees this negative charge accumulation and they decide to meet and have a little tryst in the bridge. Well they're stupid chemicals and of course they just go right past each other anyway. But the point is this. That's cation and it migrates this way. And this is an anion, and it migrates this way. The cation will migrate to the cathode. And so the copper here, the copper bar, is the cathode. And because this is an anion or a negative ion, it migrates to something called the anode. That's why these things have these names. Anode and cathode, because the migrating, the migrating of ions takes place to them. So, the cations migrate to the cathode, and the anions migrate to the anode. And you got to remember that. Cations migrate to cathode, anions migrate to anode. Electrons always move from the anode to the cathode. The electrons always go from A to C. Hey, Kevin, wait a minute. How, how, how do we know which one's the anode and the cathode again? It's not hard. The anode is oxidation. The cathode is reduction. The vowels go together and the consonants go together. So the anode is always the thing that's undergoing oxidation. The cathode is always the thing that's undergoing reduction, which is the strong oxidizing agent, which is the strong reducing agent. Now the diagram is complete, except for maybe the net equation where you add this one to this one to get the net equation underneath. So this is how you set up a cell that is going to be, well, it's going to be spontaneous because all voltaic or galvanic cells are spontaneous. Uh, by the way, that not again means standard conditions. So all of these solutions here have to be one mole per liter. If they're not, then you have to make corrections to that, and that's a whole bunch of thermodynamics that comes a lot later. But the deal is, this is a standard setup for a cell. And by the way, this one's actually called the Daniel cell. So voltaic, go galvanic, and then this is the, called the Daniel cell. Okay, well now we're going to do another cell here that looks a little bit more complicated, but really isn't.